Hey everyone, today I'll be talking to you about Pinnapad, the unified framework for user authentication to Kubernetes clusters. So today I'm joined by Anjali, uh, the PM for the project, and myself, uh, one of the engineers on the Pinnapad team. So let's imagine that you use Kubernetes and you've started to get used to using kubectl and are really enjoying it. And it's now time to start deploying it for real in your environment where you happen to use Active Directory to provide identities for your end users. It seems like a fairly common thing to want to do. Um, so let's think about how might, you might imagine doing that. So you might start off with a Google search. And it appears that the first result for the most obvious Google search is somebody's blog post. So let's see where that takes us. Now, if you've used kubectl and Kubernetes for a while, you'd imagine it would be a series of kubectl apply commands. Instead, what you encounter is a very complex set of configuration using two components, dex and gangway, um, that is unexpected. There's a lot of YAML, a lot of instruction, and it's not really clear what you're getting yourself into here. So maybe let's back up. Maybe that was a bad search result. Let's back up and see what the second thing is. That appears to be some official Kubernetes documentation. Maybe that can help us find a way to use Active Directory for Kubernetes. And so we looked through the official authentication documents for Kubernetes, and they refer to client certificates, tokens, and proxies. Nothing specific about using Active Directory. And so here we start learning some of the problems. Right? Kubernetes is very pluggable. It does not have direct integration with Active Directory. Uh, you're you're kind of on your own on that. So this is beneficial if you want to build custom integrations, but not so fun if you just want to get some work done. So maybe let's head back to the blog post and see what it entails. So we have to deploy two components, Dex and Gangway in concert. We have to configure various CLI flags on the API server. Um, we have to learn some OAuth semantics, uh, have some very specific coordinated state between these components. And the reality is these components were not built together. Uh, they're open source projects, uh, important in their own right. And certainly there's not necessarily anything wrong with this setup. It's just not curated. And it can be difficult to understand what's happening. It is really, really per single cluster. And it doesn't really scale out. Uh, you know, you can imagine a ton of extra work to add these components to every single cluster you use, and it doesn't necessarily lead to the most convenient or secure deployment. So, Pinnapad attempts to solve these types of problems by providing a much more Kubernetes native approach to authentication uh, via common providers such as OIDC and AD, and it allows you to configure these at runtime. Uh, it is an open source project that you can use on any Kubernetes distribution. So you want to start installing Pinniped. The first steps are really easy. You just kubectl apply the manifest and install the two core components, which are the Pinniped supervisor and the Pinniped concierge. The Pinniped supervisor is just a web server, so it will require you to configure the ingress and TLS for it. Here's an example of how we've done it in on a GKE cluster with Cert Manager and Let's Encrypt. So we start off by creating Load Balancer as a service for the supervisor. Next, we configure Google Cloud DNS to point to the service. We install Cert Manager. And then we request certificates from Cert Manager for the particular host name that you intend to use. So if we finally come to the configuration steps that are more pinniped specific. So all previous steps that you saw were just configuring the web server and you've probably done that for other applications that you may be using. So the first core step is to create federation domain and configure it with the issuer URL that you created in the previous steps. So Federation domain, what this means or what this entails is, uh, in this case, uh, the 
issuer, uh, for example, supervisor.mycompany.com, this represents the set of Kubernetes clusters that are going to trust this particular Pinniped supervisor. Now let's go to Active Directory configuration. Well, it's as easy as you can imagine. You create an Active Directory custom resource. Uh, you point it at the host name of your Active Directory server, and you provide it with bind credentials. So that's it. Um, so there are other configuration options that you can do, for example, user search and group search uh, with custom attributes. Uh, but the default configuration that we provide is very well curated for most of the Active Directory deployments. Okay, so now the next step is to configure the Pinniped concierge. Uh, so we wanted to trust the Pinniped supervisor as an identity issuer. And this is going to be for a specific cluster audience. In this case, it is the dev cluster. So this is likely going to be used by developers. So now you're ready to get the kube config and distribute this to your developers. Uh, notice here that there are no credentials in the kubeconfig, so it is safe to distribute to users. Now your uh, developers can take that kubeconfig and uh, start accessing the cluster with kubectl commands. Here's an example of a developer that may be uh, using a kubectl get namespaces command on the CLI. They get prompted for uh, username and password uh, because of course we've uh, done Active Directory configuration. So they get prompted for the username and password here. And once they are successfully logged in, then they can see the namespaces on the cluster. Now your developers may want to uh, send more kubectl commands to the cluster. But uh, of course, they are not going to be prompted again for username and password because all of their credentials are cached. So we provide some helpful commands, for example, the who am I command that helps you understand how you are logged into the cluster. Now, in the previous example, uh, you had put in Penny as the username, uh, but Kubernetes will display the full user principal name. The flexibility that we offer to the IT administrator is to configure the username however they want, for example, using SAM account name, user principal name, or the mail attribute. Also, by default, uh, we give you all of the direct and nested groups. You can easily change and customize this based on your needs, and we provide ample documentation examples to support this. Okay, so you logged into uh, one cluster with the supervisor and concierge. Now you may want to add another cluster and you may want to give access to another cluster to your user. Well, it's as simple as uh, installing the concierge on the second cluster with just two kubectl commands and then configuring the JOT authenticator to trust the supervisor and give it a unique audience. So we don't need to install supervisor or any other configuration again. So now you can get kubeconfig for the second cluster and pass it to your users and developers. Also users don't get prompted a second time as the credentials are safely cached and can be used uh, across the clusters as long as they are part of the same federation domain. So to recap, Pinnipet allows you to add and remove uh, identity providers at runtime using standard uh, Kubernetes resources. It supports multiple different types of identity providers. It allows easy login across many clusters with single sign-on support. And of course, it's open source. So looking to the future, we're looking to add multiple IDP support. Uh, if folks are interested in this community interest, we would like to add Kerberos support for Active Directory, so you no longer even have to type in your password. Uh, additional IDE types like GitHub and Google. Uh, could be implemented. And we're looking at various security hardening efforts, uh, such as uh, more frequent and automatic rotation of all uh, signing keys. And we're really looking to have community members provide input on our roadmap so we can prioritize things that people are looking to have in their Kubernetes environments. Uh, we welcome your feedback and look forward to working with you. Uh, you can find us in the Kubernetes Slack 
as well as on GitHub. Uh, everything here is Apache uh, Apache license 2.0, just like the rest of the Kubernetes ecosystem. And we look forward to working with you. Thank you.